And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, do you know what's hot right now? Romeo and Juliet! Okay, not really, but what's really hot in the gaming world is making small games that have a few cards. It started with the very popular success of Love Letter, and now many other companies are doing it. Crash Games is one of those. The Council of Verona is a game that takes this and puts it in the story of Romeo and Juliet. So, in this game, in which you can play two to five players, you are trying to accomplish different goals and do that. I mean, the game takes pretty a pretty quick amount of time. In fact, almost longer it will take me to explain it than it does to play it. Let me show you. The game comes with 17 cards that represent the different people involved in the famous thing Romeo and Juliet. Here we have the Prince and Lord Montague and Lord Capulet and Juliet and Lady Capulet. And you can see that each of these uh, characters is either red to show that they're in the Capulet family or blue to show that they're in the Montague family, also with an M or a C there. And then there are a few who are neutral, like Count Paris here. And there's even a few more. Let's see, there's a couple like the nurse here. She's neutral and Capulet, so she's both types. So what will happen is these cards are going to be shuffled. Now, you won't use all the cards in each game. Some of the cards are like, for example, Samson here, a five player game only. And you take those out if you're playing with less than five players. And there's also special rules for two. But let's say we're playing a five player game. We take these cards, we shuffle them, and then each player gets one randomly. Then one person is chosen to go first, and that person takes the rest of the cards, picks one, and they pass it. Each person takes the cards and picks one until they all have three cards, and the leftover cards are discarded. Now, when that happens, the first player goes first, and on their turn, they're going to do three things. First of all, they must play a card from their hand. That card is either going to go into the council the cards that are in this direction, horizontal direction, or they go into exile. So here we have the friar who's in the council and Romeo's in exile. And as the game progresses, you pretty much have the opportunity to place these people any way you want. As the game progresses, you can put them in the council or exile, that you can put them all in one or all in the other. When you put these people out, they also have a special ability that you may wish to use. For example, here, the Friar says move one character from exile to the council. So when I play him, I use his ability, and I say I'm bringing the nurse back to the council. And you'll notice the nurse has uh, a very similar ability here, move one character from exile to the council. But other people have different abilities. Other people don't have abilities, and if the character you play does not have one, so be it. Finally, you can place a disc on each character. Now, you're going to have a certain number of discs. Again, this depends on the number of players playing the game, but there's up to four discs where there's 0, 3, 4, and 5, and they're all face down, and they're, each player has a specific color. And so you can place these discs on any available spot of anybody. It doesn't have to be the person you just played. So let's say I played the Friar here. I could put one on the Lord Capulet, or I could put one over here on Romeo. It doesn't matter. And so that's how the game works. You keep doing this until all the characters have been played. Then everybody has one final round to place tokens, one token, on people who are out there. And then at that point, the game's over, and you're going to evaluate the folks with tokens on them. Each person with tokens on them will score points for those people if they meet their thing here. So for Lord Capulet, there needs to be more Capulets on the council than Montagues. And so... Let's say, in this instance, there is. There's two Capulets in the council and only one Montague. And Blue put a token on him, so that token is worth three. Notice there's also little modifiers here, so if the Blue token had been here, the Blue token would only be worth two. And so everyone has different things. Romeo and Juliet both get points if they are together. The Prince gets points if the number of people on the council are the same from both families, or if there's four neutrals on the council. Um, then Lord Montague is the opposite of Lord Capulet. He wants more Montagues on the, on the council. This guy gets points as long as he's with the majority of people in the game. Uh, this guy gets points if there's more people exiled than there are in the council. This jerk, or jerkette, gets points if Romeo and Juliet are not together. 
So that is essentially how you play the game. The game does come with cards to show you what all the abilities are, so you can kind of try to outguess what people are going to be doing on their turn. And whoever has the most points is the winner. I suppose you could play several rounds and add them together to see who gets the highest score. So there you have it. A very simple easy game to play and one that man when i was showing this to people it was really easy to get people to play they said romeo and juliet i'm in it was just it was such an odd thing i mean my you know me and my daughter played and i taught some other people and, and then i taught some other people and it seemed like each group i showed it to said romeo and juliet cool i just thought that was an, 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 odd, an odd thing but anyhow so that's good good theme good components good quality box i don't like stickering tokens but what do you do so anyhow the game itself it's trying to match that success that Love Letter had, that, oh, look, a little quick card game. It is that. I don't think it's ever going to be as successful as Love Letter. It's it, it, it's cool game, but it is very possible to just get characters and just have things not work, switch ability tokens and things. It's And whoever goes last has a huge advantage because they can kind of control things, but going first is also a pretty big advantage. The gameplay is good. It's not as exciting as I wanted it to be. It's kind of quick, been there, done that. It's a very easy going, relaxing game. However, and I don't know if I mentioned these things, but in this case, I really like to. There's a, a small expansion for the game. I don't even remember what the expansion is called. I want to call it Poison, but it is, yeah, that's what it's called, the Poison expansion. Now, this was an expansion for Kickstarter people, and uh, Crash Games told me that you'd be able to get it through different promotions from conventions. But I'll tell you, what this expansion did is that it had two more tokens for each person, a Poison token and a, and a Healing Potion. And you could put a Poison token on someone, and at the end of the game, you if there was more Poison tokens, then healing tokens on someone, that person would die. And when you die, you know, your stuff doesn't happen and you can't get any points that people put on there. Wow, that made a big difference. That made me double my liking of the game. That, wow, I, I just, I really, if that had been included in this game, I'd be giving this game an eight rating right now and saying, get it, it's very good. Because it really is good with that expansion. So if you can get that expansion somehow, some way, eBay, internet, whatever, uh, get it then I would say definitely get it. Other than that, I'm still giving this a good recommendation. It's, it's a decently fun, easy going card game with a theme people are gonna like, card play people like, easy to teach and easy to get out there. Good, that's all good. It just lacks a little bit of that tenseness that I would, I would like to see in this game. Added that poison expansion and I say, very good, a very good game, exceptionally good. So, Nah, I don't know if everyone's going to be able to get that poison, but maybe we can convince Crash Games to publish that for everybody. So we'll see. Anyhow, I managed to go through this whole thing without doing one quote from a play or acting Shakespearean in any sort of fashion. So I think I'll end with that. Council of Verona. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.